Good morning, everybody. My name is Kimberly Wright. Welcome to the acronym MSOON, Making Something Out of Nothing. This class is all about recycling uh, arts, creating uh, beautiful crafts out of things that you would have normally thrown away, turning trash into treasure, so to speak. All right, thanks so much for joining. It's a beautiful Tuesday. It's October the 19th, 2021. Today, our holidays and events are as follows. National Seafood Bisque Day. Today is World Pediatric Bone and Joint Day. Pro-Life Day of Silent Solidarity. LGBT Center Awareness Day. National Pharmacy Technician Day. National New Friends Day. Milad Anabi Day. Evaluate Your Life Day. So even though today is Evaluate Your Life Day, I think I evaluate my life every day to try to, you know, make correction and make things better, to move things forward for progression, for the best outcome. All right. So let's get straight into our lesson. If you hear any noises in the classroom, it's because we have some work done in here. So just don't mind that. And basically right now, I'm just catching up with you on what we're doing on our cardboard crafts and uh, CD art. And if you would love to or like to share show or talk about anything, feel free. Uh, one thing I wanted to say is uh, thank you for anybody that participated in the breast cancer awareness program last week. And we do have the holidays coming up. Some of you celebrate, some of you don't. However, if you feel as though you want to suggest any projects, upcoming projects for the holidays, which uh, generally the biggest ones we have is uh, Thanksgiving, uh, Christmas, and New Year's. Um, me personally, I don't celebrate the holidays. However, I do make uh, projects that deal with that time. For example, I might make a tree, but might not, I might not necessarily use words that have to deal with the holidays or Christmas or anything so that I can display the piece all year round so that it won't just be like a, a holiday or annual piece. So think about that. And if you have any suggestions or something that you want to do in the class, please let me know. And we're just going to go straight into, since I was planning on showing you the piece with the, the, the decorative wall piece, that's going to actually be a, um, it's like, a, it's a decorative wall piece where you have decor on the wall, but the lattice, that surrounds the outside is supposed to hold family pictures. And so I'm just gonna get all of that now. So I can show you every time, you know, you go back and work back and forth and work on your pieces, you come up with different concepts or build different concepts, things uh, come into your mind. So you're always adding on. The reason why I'm covering up my mouth cause it's like a really, Kind of like a foul smell in here. It's not that bad. It's really just uh, clay and sand coming up out of the sink. All right. So I'm just going to bring everything over and show you basically everything I've been working on. And remember, all we have to have is time. So that's what I've been doing is spending time just building up on what seems interesting. All right. So now, as you can see, I had to build like a couple of more lattice last week. Uh, I'm going to take my time and pull the hot glue from these pieces of lattice. And this lattice goes around my world piece, if you remember. 
So the concept of this that I started, I really know I wanted to do a world since these CD pieces shine like blue and that could represent the water. And I'm still working on the other continents, as you can see, putting their products there. What it is, I'm having to uh, collect or gather the other things that I need, which I haven't found them yet. And so I put together all these pieces of lattice here. They actually do surround the entire uh, global world. And what I did is from the bottom area here, let me turn this side. You can see the last piece of lattice. What I did is lined up my scissors and came up to cut my lattice with some neat uh, edges, so to speak, that go in a diagonal fashion. And so the reason why I'm cutting these two is because, because these are the last two that I just made this morning. I realized I had needed two extra ones. And so I went on ahead and made those. And so I'm gonna just go ahead and cut these bottoms quickly. I would love to see if you all have anything to share or show or questions. All right, so I finished my lattice and quickly, I just wanted to pick up the trimming, kind of like the clean up as I go. And so, uh, you saw last week how I had the lattice. I really will be able to put it together on the floor here. So that's what I'll do. I'll be able to share with you what I try to do. So this kind of goes somewhat like this. I'm gonna show this in the bottom. Looks kind of weird, but it takes me a couple of minutes to put it together. I know I keep the camera. So I know you all had made some paper tubes on your own and I didn't give a clear direction as to what to do with them. I'm basically just doing my own thing and hoping that you all would kind of do your own thing as well to just be creative and kind of see what you come up with. So pretty much you know, it's gonna be a little bit tightened up more than that, but that's pretty much how that's gonna be. And then the world glues on these inside pieces, which like I said, they're gonna be ending up a little bit tighter. And I might even cut the background pieces in some type of style or shape. So the reason why I showed you all this is because the particular lattice is where I'm going to be hanging uh, family photos. And so since this is the world, this piece is, it's going to be like, uh, the, the piece is going to be kind of sort of like call, like my family is out of this world. My family is out of this world. I don't know. That's what I just came up with. But let me just show you quickly, since that's the world, 
And I have those angular lattice pieces coming out. I'm going to, so I'm using the diagram of the solar system to actually manipulate or put the, uh, place the planets uh, around the earth world, where, uh, no, sorry, the earth where they need to be. But I decided that, um, you know how you always have bought like little things and never use them. So I bought this solar system mobile from the dollar store, it cost $1. And I bought it like a long time, but I remembered that I had it. So what I did was took my time and I colored the planets with uh, color pencils and markers. And then I put glitter on them to make them look a little bit more fancy and store-bought. And just because uh, I have the bling on the world, so to speak, the CD art, I wanted to have the planets to have some type of bling. And so what I did was I made these circular cardboard, pieces of cardboard circles, and I made them larger than the planets and I speckled some white on them for like stars and everything. And so far I finished um, Saturn. And I'm gonna, on the lattice around the world, I'm gonna place these planets in their appropriate spaces where they need to go. This is Jupiter. I have the sun. And right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly put together the other um, planets as it pertains to putting them on their boards. So, you know, sometimes in class, I just want to do, I do some of my work out of class to be prepared to show, have something to show you. And then I do some of the work in class so that you'll actually see how I've done it. Anyway, these are the rest of the planets. And so, so I can remember which one is which I've already written the names on the back, but since I'm gonna glue this down, I need to write it on the back of the actual cardboard. This is Neptune. And so I'm actually using Elmer's glue, but I want it to be glued here uh, instantly as well. So I'm gonna add just a bit of hot glue and go ahead and place that down. And so that's Neptune. And just, I'm gonna just keep going on with those right quick. I have Uranus. I have, I'm gonna just do two at a time. So I have Uranus and Venus. All right, Venus, hot glue. Elmer's glue to reinforce it, make sure it doesn't come off later, and hot glue instantly. So I don't really have to wait for it to dry. All right, so this one is Venus. And it'll be really cool to see how this looks when it comes all the way out. So, you know, as an artist, you have a vision 
but even you yourself, once you finish your work, you're very excited to see how your pieces come out. So don't even get frustrated. You know, sometimes you might have to take a break on your work and come back on it later when you feel the right energy. It's just like a writer having writer's block. Sometimes, you know, artists have to really feel uh, or have the energy, that type of vibration to be able to create, produce the art. All right, this is Mars. Once again, I colored those with a marker and color pencil first, but I went back and um, this is Mercury. I went back and put glitter, the actual colors that, and I also researched the colors of the planet so that I could get those right as well. So once again, I always say to you all, research the things that you are creating. You don't have to, even make the things as you see them you can do your own uh, representation and thing but it helps you learn about some things and give you gives you ideas as well all right this is mercury all right so i finished all of those planets and as you can see there's one planet that's missing that i did not uh use which is earth the earth, because my large piece, that's the centerpiece for the wall hanging is, uh, that's what I'm using for the earth. So what I did tell myself is, I'll show you the little card. These are all the planets. I'm just stacking them up, moving them out the way because I'm not ready for that stuff yet. And I will not glue my world down to the lattice until I'm actually finished because the lattice is so large I want to make sure I'm finished with the world and I don't have to go back and forth, uh, continue to finish nothing on that portion. All right. So, one second, young people. So I thought about it and Oh, I know what I was about to say. So these are the actual pieces of cards that the planets were popped out of. And as you can see, I have the world here. Even though I've used all the other ones, there's gonna be a chance for me to use this world on some other piece of art. So I'm saving that. All right. So I've already broke down a cardboard box uh, before class even started because I was saying to you all that the last uh, art pieces that you see here was the last two that I was gonna make. Actually, I made those for the purposes of just doing a demonstration for class. Now, after, somehow right after I did those two pieces, which is the moon and stars and the one of the hearts, I, I decided that it's not like my heart wasn't in it per se with the other two wind chimes, but now it stroke my creativity more to pull out of me what I probably really would want to do as it pertains to uh, a wind chime or CD art. So I'm actually gonna make three more uh, wind chimes. Um, one of them is going to be so popular that I know somebody's going to ask me for one. So I'm going to make two of those. Um, and yeah, so what I decided to make, and one is kind of like personal. I wanted to make one. I was thinking about why didn't I, even though I love the concept of the moon and stars and the hearts, I was thinking, why didn't I do something that would even be more personal that I probably, I mean, I would hang them in my house, but you know, something that would be more personal to your 
taste and style. I thought about doing um, something that had to do with yoga. Since I teach yoga, I'm always uh, practicing yoga on my own. I love meditation and I love peace and um, just pleasant things, good things in life. So that's what yoga is all about, building a life uh, centered on um, being the best you can be and uh, just living life and watching your life being aware. So anyway, I'm making a piece that represents that. And it's going to have, I love things that deal with uh, Egypt. So I'm going to incorporate the the yoga or the metaphysical, that type of thing with the Egyptian, uh, some Egyptian figures for one of the wind chimes. And then the other two wind chimes are gonna be uh, representational of music. I was thinking about doing two pieces that had to deal with music. So those are gonna be really, really uh, beautiful. But however, I'm going to be working on them on my own so that I don't take up uh, too many more classes with the CD art. However, anytime that it does take time. So anytime that you are ready to show anything that you've uh, completed or haven't completed that you just is a works in progress, please feel free. If you have any questions, please let me know. All right. So. I was investigating triangles and the fact of, we know that a triangle has three sides. So I was noticing that sometimes when you look at tri pyramids from like Egypt and stuff, you see pyramids with four sides, like four-sided pyramids. But then I was thinking, well, I know I've seen a three-sided pyramid before. Does that exist? And I looked looked them up. I said, what's the difference between a three-sided and a four-sided pyramid? So if this makes sense to you, let me grab my marker. I was like, as long as I've been doing, uh, as long as I've been drawing and doing artwork as a child, I never really even thought about it or noticed this uh, particular, what do you call it? Particular thing that you could point out. Oh, I, I was looking for this. All right, so I found it. So if you have a, if you have a three-sided triangle, then the base, will be, uh, sorry, if you have a three-sided pyramid, then the base is going to be a pyramid. If you have a four-sided pyramid, then what is the base going to be? Anybody? I don't know, Kim. <laughs> It's going to be the fifth side, the bottom. <laughs> no, this is what I'm saying. I'm saying if, I'm you have, if you have four sides to a pyramid, then what will the base be? I'll just go ahead and show you. The base is going to be a square. Oh, OK, yeah. OK. So this is why a four-sided pyramid will have, oops, I kind of drew that four triangles right. and they come up and they're together. The three-sided pyramid is going to have three triangles. Oh. You see that? Yeah. And so I decided that I wanted to just try, since it's a pyramid and it's made with a triangular shape, I thought that it made sense to make it with three sides and the triangular bottom. So like I said, well, yours is four four sides, isn't it? Isn't your bottom a square? Yeah, my bottom's a square. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. It's but it's still a beautiful pyramid. I love pyramids, but um, you made that out of paper. Yeah, cardboard. Let me check it out one 
Hold on one second. But I haven't decorated it. It's okay. That looks nice. So what I decided to do. This is the good. bottom. Yeah, that looks good. So what I decided to do was just uh, make the, the three-sided triangle or pyramid because that's what made sense to me. Or I just wanted to try it out because I know I'm probably usually making the four-sided triangles. And so as I continue to build on that, I'm definitely going to show you all what I've been doing. And so what I'm doing with this particular board is I've already, uh, I'm just going to trace this particular, let me make sure I have the proper pen. I'm going to just trace this triangle out because I made one triangle and I decided to use that as a template. One second, sorry. Y'all feeling okay today? All right, so I decided to use that as a tip oh, so good. Yes. for each side. And I painted the other two triangles before class, but I just left one that wasn't painted because I needed one more side and I didn't want to have my hand in paint. Um, as I move around, <coughs> things are moving around and I'm like looking for them. I was just looking for my scissors and it must be up on this board. Yep. All right, so I'm going to show you all the other two. So if I'm going to leave these totally gold, just solid gold, then I'm probably going to add another coat of gold spray. But if I'm going to put the CD pieces uh, on there, then I only need one coat. And um, Kimberly. Yes, ma'am. Somehow you got small. It said Kimberly's rights network is bandwidth is low. Oh. Now, now you're up big. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. There's no problem. Did that happen to anybody else? Some people were saying it happened yesterday in my class. So yeah. So it must be something going on with the internet, like sometimes while we're in the building. Right. Anybody have any questions? Anything to share, show, or suggest for the upcoming I, holidays? What y'all well, I, I was wondering, could could I since I got so many of these um what do you call those things? Circles. I we made them out of uh, paper. What do you? Your tubes. Could I make? Could I make a um, pyramid out of my tubes? Yes, that'd be. That's what I was thinking. I thought that might be kind of interesting. But even instead of making a pyramid, think of some yeah. other shape you can make. Unless you just want to make a pyramid, go. For no, it. I don't. I really don't want to make a pyramid. <laughs> no, you can make anything you like. That's what I'm curious to see what you all can make. So I was just thinking, like, you know, with those tools, we've made bowls by bending them, shaping them flat. Right. We've made dolls, mm -hmm. like, just be creative as to what you even think you could possibly do. And if you do want to do a pyramid, Miss Jean, please feel free because it's going to be a different style due to the fact that you're doing it with the tools anyway. I love those tools. I just love them. I don't, I just, haven't come up with a concept where I can make them show off. I thought of an abstract, you know, so I might work on that and, and just make an art. It's okay. I will say you can also look on YouTube. Uh, 
or Google uh, things to make with magazine paper tubes or paper tubes. And okay. you, you can get ideas, but still come up with your own thing from seeing, you know, a lot of different things that they might make out there. Thanks. Anybody got anything to share, show, question? Anybody have any suggest? What would what would y'all are y'all interested in making any type of holiday stuff? Like yes, a, you are. Yes. Okay, cool. So we will get prepared to make. Are you interested in making some for Thanksgiving, like a centerpiece for the table, or something that your your family thing, or and Christmas? Y'all want to make some for Thanksgiving? I I'm interested in Christmas. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, so what we'll do is jump right into a project for Christmas, and that way it'll give us like almost two and a half months to kind of like make it. So next week, I will be giving you all uh, the tools and supplies that you need for our next project, which will be something for the Christmas holidays. And trust me, it's going to be something that you can possibly display all year round. If you decide to put something on it like Happy Holidays or Christmas, that's up to you. But however, I'm going to do a basic piece and you can smash it up or, you know, uh, upgrade it as it pertains to your own creativity. I celebrate Kwanzaa. I don't celebrate Christmas. No problem. So what I'm saying is going to be a holiday piece that you'll be able to incorporate into something for Kwanzaa or Christmas. So don't worry, it won't be so holidayish, meaning like it won't be able to break cross barriers of the yes, ma'am. And not only that, uh, this year hopefully we will be having a Kwanzaa celebration. And I know in my pottery class, uh, early, early in the year. I started to make a kinara, a kinara, which is a uh, seven hold candle holder that holds uh, the candles that represent each day of uh, Kwanzaa. So hopefully somebody in Pottery will have a candle holder, a kinara, something that we can use for our Kwanzaa celebration. And if you want to start making anything for a uh, altar, or table, so for the festive for the festive part of uh, Kwanzaa or Christmas, you can. Okay. So we'll be talking about that next week, and I'll give you all the supplies and everything you need to uh, get that I, done. I want to I want to ask Jacqueline a question. Do you have a Kwanzaa wreath? No, I've never had that. I made a canar. I mean, uh -huh. yeah, a canara, I know the, I know the canara candle, but I'm just saying, I've never seen a Kwanzaa wreath. I bet that would be pretty. That's so much Christmassy. You think wreath. so? I think you can make I it really. I would like to make something for my front door. That's what I'm saying. You can make it like Kwanzaa yeah, with the red is, and black. Is, and... Uh, sorry, Miss Jean. A wreath is a really good suggestion, Miss Jacqueline, because if you, even though you're thinking a wreath is a Christmas thing, wreaths are really like a uh, they have more history behind it than that. And so they have this, uh, they have people who only make wreaths. They make all sorts of different theme type of wreaths. So I think the Kwanzaa wreath will be really beautiful for the door, or you could possibly make something else. However, I thought of a good idea. Year round, year round. Yeah. Oh, yes, but I made a great, I, th I thought Your of a great screen idea. Freeze. It's okay. I thought of a great idea next week Whatever the utensils or whatever you need for Kwanzaa, I'm going to show you or give you the instructions of the supplies, how to make those. And it's probably going to be everything out of things you can make recycled or paper. And we're going to do something for uh, Christmas as well. So whoever, if two people want to do that, like if you'll have a choice, if you celebrate Christmas or Kwanzaa, if you want to do something from both, you'll have a choice. Next week, and I have that all ready for you all. Oh, good. Okay. So um, that'll give us time to do that. And thank you so much for joining, making something out of nothing. 
Um, if you all wanted to know what was for lunch today, uh, for lunch today, we are having Creole chicken stuffed bell peppers, meatloaf with a tomato gravy, dirty rice, baked sweet potatoes, spinach salad, cherry cobbler, dinner rolls and cornbread, what sorted sweet baked sweet potatoes. Okay. Spinach salad, cherry cobbler, dinner rolls and cornbread, drinks and bottled water. Kim, I just I would just like to say that I've missed class so many times because for some reason my brain has registered 1030, 1030, 1030. <laughs> and, uh, I almost missed my class today because I kept telling Jamal my class is at 1030, but it's because every class I have is at 1030, except for making something out of nothing. It was at 10 o'clock. Exactly. And I saw Miss Jacqueline Lattimore getting class early. And I was like, why is she getting class like 40 something minutes early? Then I sort of meditated. Thought, I was like, why would Miss Jacqueline do that? I said, because class start at 10. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, I mean, I understand maybe sometimes I'll try to give you a reminder, but yep, making something out of nothing starts at 10. It's all right. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. All right. Y'all have a wonderful and blessed day, and I'll be able to show you more of what I created next week, and we're going to start. I'm going to give you the list of supplies, what you need for the next project for the holidays. Peace and love. Thanks for joining me, Kimberly Wright. Have a wonderful, mm -hmm. safe, and blessed day. You too. You as well. Bye. You too. Peace, everybody. Peace.